Questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, reflections of your old past, they seem to face you every day. This one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way. Y'all know this song, sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. You say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is for the world. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Sing it again, y'all. Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the way. Amen. In the corners of your mind Traces of discouragement and Peace you cannot find Reflections of your old past They seem to face you every day This one thing I know for sure Is Jesus is the way I 
I know this song. Sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. You say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know he will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen of your mind traces of discouragement peace you cannot find reflections of your old past they seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way y'all know this song, sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Amen Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got mountains That you think you cannot climb you say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know he will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other it's Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer, sing it again Jesus is For the world Above him there's no one Jesus is the way 
Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Sing it again, y'all. Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the way. Amen. of your old past they seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way y'all know this song sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other this Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other, because Jesus is the way. I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. You say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the Word of God is true and everything is promised. I know He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Say it again. Jesus is for the world. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is. For the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen in this, this morning. And because the Bible told us that our God is new every morning and he's have got him in the place of prayer waiting on him to receive a word that will do us good this morning and like before and even better than before I know we will be blessed 
in a thorough, thorough way. So before we go into the service, we just want to give you a few more minutes to get yourself ready, settled, and be in the presence of the Lord. As you do that, our Father and the Lord will pray for us. All right. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this great morning that you have made. Thank you for the last Sunday in the month of May and the last day in the month of May. Thank you for showing up mightily all throughout the period of the pandemic. Thank you because today marks the end of the pandemic. As we step into the next few hours, which gives birth to the month of June, a new chapter opens to the glory of your name. Everyone that the pandemic have arrested with decree that they are delivered right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, visit us afresh this morning. Empower us to live after the pandemic. Amen. We are, we are seeing the end of the pandemic. The pandemic will never see our end. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I receive unction and authorance to teach your word. Amen. And grant your people grace as they listen to your word and let this word bless us. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to be expectant in God's presence. I want you to raise your spiritual antenna. Let it be very high. Be sensitive in the spirit to hear what the Lord will have you here in the service today. So that we'll be able to act on it. Sir, what will God have us here this morning, sir? Uh, many good things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's welcome all those who have joined us already from different parts of the world. Right. Stanford Mutuku is watching. The Lord bless Sam Stanford Mutuku. Amen. Rita Ugumba from Umwaya is with us. The Lord bless you, ma. Thank you for joining us. Amen. And uh, every other person who have joined us, see the number is high, but uh, you have not made a comment. Please make a comment so we can know that you are with us. Because when you make a comment, that it becomes obvious that you are with us. So you are not just hiding in the crowd. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'll be teaching this morning on the afflictions of the destined. The afflictions of the destined or special afflictions for special destinies. Special afflictions for special destinies. The afflictions of the destined. I want to give an introduction by making you understand that as long as you have a destiny, get ready for affliction. When you have a special destiny, get ready for special afflictions. I'll prove it in the next few minutes using the life of Moses. When you have a special destiny, get ready for special attacks. Get ready for special afflictions. When you have an uncommon destiny, get ready for uncommon attacks, uncommon afflictions, uncommon oppressions from all quarters. But one of the good things I need to make you understand is, no matter the affliction, you will always overcome, especially if you have a destiny. Amen. If anybody does not have a destiny and he suffers what you suffer, they may not recover. In fact, they will never ever come out of it. Because the afflictions that will come will be terrible and it will take them away. All right, so let's get to God's word. Psalm 34, verse number 19. Can you put the camera on my face as I teach the word of God now? And don't let me give you that instruction again. Always obey it. Know when to use your brain. Can you zoom a bit more closer? It is a bit far. Zoom more closer. Always be creative. Do it better. It's not good yet. I'm watching from here. It's not good yet. Can somebody take over from me and show you what to do? Psalm 34, verse 19. Psalm chapter 34, verse number 19. 
the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. <laughs> Not understood this Bible passage, you will understand it today. I'm coming. By the grace of God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. You are coming out of out of them all. All right, can we have other versions of the Bible? So we can study that place in the word of God. Psalm 34, verse number 19. Amplified version says, Many evils confront the consistently righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all many evils. Not many good things. Many evils. So understand it very well. Many evils confront the consistently righteous. But the Almighty God delivers him out of them all. Another version, please. Basic Bible in English says, Great are the troubles of the upright. But the Lord takes him safely out of them all. I will prove it in the next few minutes. The Lord takes him safely out of the troubles, out of the great troubles, out of them all. All right, can I have the Bible? Is many are the adversities of the righteous, but Jehovah delivered him out of them all. So they are called adversities. Mm -hmm. Another one calls them troubles. Another one calls them evils. Uh, King James Version calls it afflictions. Now look at this good news Bible says, good people suffer many troubles. Good people suffer many troubles, but the Lord saves them from them all. <laughs> good people always suffer many troubles, but God saves them from them all. All another version of the Bible, please. New International Version says, A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. So understand that the word the person there is a righteous man, not an idiot. A righteous man. Many times when you see people who are righteous passing through troubles, people say, Ah, he must be a sinner, he must have been deceiving us for many years. Ah, maybe he's not righteous. Maybe he's an agent of the devil. Maybe he's a devil worshiper. Ah, no, no, no. See, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Uh, message Bible says, disciples so often get into trouble. Still, God is there every time. They remember they are disciples. They are not just ordinary people. So when you see a Christian passing through some difficult times, don't conclude that he is an agent of the devil. Mm -mm especially in East Africa or in Kenya. When you see a church or a child of God, a pastor, say, ah, he must be a devil worshiper. We've been suspecting him for a while. Ah, now it's getting obvious. Look at the kind of troubles he's passing through. No, no way. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Second Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 16 to 17. Second Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 16. The Bible says, For which cause we faint not, verse 16, but though our outward man perish, but yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. There are some afflictions you've passed through that will start working for you. <laughs> Amen. They be employed to work for you. Amen. You will not die under such afflictions in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Exodus chapter 1 verse number 12. Exodus 1 verse 12. The Bible says, Exodus 1 verse 12. The Bible says, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. So affliction fertilized their destiny and they began to grow. The more they afflicted them, the more they... Remember, these are the children of Israel. And today, the affliction is not showing in their life. They are a nation. 
and the nations that afflicted them are nowhere to, you know this is egypt afflicting them egypt is junior to them when israel talks egypt trembles presently but they are the ones afflicting them psalm 90 verse 14 to 15 psalm chapter 90 verse 14 to 15 the bible says oh satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days verse number 15 says make us glad according to the days wherein thou has afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil god is a specialist he can make you glad he can make you so glad in the number of the days that you have been attacked make you very glad so count the number of days they've attacked you it will become the number of days for you to rejoice in the as long as you have a destiny hallelujah praise god all right hallelujah. i want to give some divine insights everyone that has a special destiny always faces special afflictions everyone that has a special destiny always faces special afflictions even christians And most of the afflictions come at designated times of your life, special times in your life. When you need to cross from one level to another level, they come at transition points. Most of them come at <coughs> points. Transition points are points you need to move from one level to another level in your life. Most of those afflictions always come at transition points. When you are about to trans transit, to another level when you're about to move to another height that god has packaged for you as part of your destiny and every new level attracts a new devil every new level attracts a new devil i'm telling you the truth i have, I have experienced it myself so i'm talking from the experiences i've passed through every new level attracts a new devil Again, to conquer a new level, you must conquer the new devil first. And you must understand that there's a new devil fighting you, or else you'll find yourself resigning to faith. I'll show it to you by using the story of Moses in the next few minutes. Because Moses passed through afflictions in his life. <laughs> Even after he left this world, he was still afflicted. I will show you. Even after he died, they were still afflicting him. <laughs> Again, when you see a man in a new level, he must have conquered the new devil. When you see somebody with a special destiny moving to a new level, he must have fought tirelessly and conquered the new devil. That's why he moved to the new level. Again, when you see a man struggling to enter a new level, it is because he has not conquered the new devil that is holding him back from that new level. And that's what the devil does. He attacks you and holds you back. Whenever you see a man struggling to enter a new level, he's trying to marry, he's not been able to marry. He's trying to have a child, he's not even able to have a child. There is a new devil he's been fighting. Again, let's go again. Life is in levels. And every level has a new devil. Every level has a devil. Life is in levels. We're in a level now in this church. After a while, we move to another level. After a while, move. So life is in levels life is in levels so you move from one level to another level from one level to another level and every level has a devil to conquer again any devil you cannot conquer denies you of your new level any devil you cannot conquer will deny you it will not allow you to enter i will show you the life of moses the guy struggled the devil didn't want him to enter some levels in his life until after at the time he also resigned to faith and thought that was the end of his life and god rescued him again glorious levels are manned by stubborn devils special levels are manned by special devils <laughs> special levels are manned by special devils hallelujah praise god again Principal levels are guarded by principal devils called principalities. So if you are a major person on earth, 
It's not a queer, queer, queer devil that be attacking you. It's very a serious principal devil that will be attacking you. And one of the things you need to notice is that you must be violent in the spirit in order to take your new level by force. That is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it. The violent take it. Only violent people take it. If you must take your new level, you must be violent. When you are brutal against the devil, new levels open unto you on their own accord. So live a militant, brutal life. Ready for warfare at any time. Because you must cross to your new level. It takes warfare to activate welfare. When you refuse warfare, <laughs> the devil will use your life for fun fair. When you reject warfare, get ready for your life to be used for fun fair. That was what they wanted to do to Samson. They brought his, him out for fun fair. If not that God has taught him to, to wake up before they finish him. He went back to warfare and he won. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to show you the life of Moses today. How the guy passed through various afflictions at different levels of his life because of his special destiny. The devil knew that Moses was to be born at a specific period of time. And then he set up afflictions to, to attack him. He set up affliction, brutal afflictions to deal with him at each level of his life. <coughs> he set up afflictions to oppress him. He set up afflictions to make his life uncomfortable at various times of his life. The guy was really afflicted. He was seriously afflicted. Number one, Moses was afflicted before birth, before he was born. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 1, verse 15 to 22, you will see it there. Exodus chapter number 1, verse 15 to 22. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other Pua, num verse number 16. And he said, when ye did the office of the midwives to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then ye sh she shall live. Verse number 17. I mean, they picked on male children. He said, but the midwives feared God and did, not as the, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the man children alive. That was when they saved Moses alive. Before Moses was born, the king woke up one morning and said, every male children must be killed. That was before his birth. There was a sensing in the spirit that somebody with a special destiny is about to be born. So every male child should be killed. And the king went and told his midwives in the hospital that every male child born by any Israelite must be killed. Any male child born by Egyptian should be spared because they sensed where that great destiny, where that special destiny was going to come from. And the attack started from before he was born, sir. They started killing people. That is why I said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. Do you know that some children died because of Moses? Because of the attack of Moses. When your destiny is not strong and the attack comes, you might not survive like all the children that never survived. The Bible says to us in the next verse, the midwife feared God and they kept the children alive. That was when they kept Moses alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive verse number nine the bible says that the midwife said unto pharaoh because the hebrew women are not as the egyptian women for they are lively and are, and bef and are uh, and are delivered before the word air means before the midwives come in unto them verse number 20 the bible says, therefore god dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied god dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and works very mighty when they spared Moses because of his special destiny, God dealt well with them. Amen. It was Moses they spared. 
something touched their heart. The Bible says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. The, something touched their heart, and they had compassion, and they decided to spare Moses. As soon as he spared Moses, God dealt well with them and promoted them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's, see, they were sparing some children during that time. And all the children they spared, part of them was Moses, and God blessed them. That is what happens when people help those who are destined, despite the fact that they are passing through affliction. When you know that this person has a destiny and anointing on him, and the enemy is attacking him, spare him, help him out, because God will bless you. God will deal well with you. The Bible says in verse number 21, verse 21, And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that God made them houses. They never had houses before. God blessed them and made them houses. Verse number 22, the Bible says, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. So when they refused to obey, the king now made it public and said, All is Egyptian, begin to kill all Israelites, male children that are born, and then it became a law in the land of Egypt to kill all male children. But as at that time, the, wife, the uh, midwives have already spared Moses. So the attack on Moses' life started from before he was born. Started from before he was born. You know, many times I, I remember my, my own life. My parents told me my story. They were expecting male child. They never had one. My first sister... Okay, uh, my f the firstborn was born. My first sister was born and she died. Then uh, the second person was born and she became the firstborn. She was a lady. Then the third person was born and she became the secondborn. She's a lady. They said before they gave birth to me, they struggled and struggled. Suddenly, when my mother was uh, conceived of me, you know, they, were, they, they had to travel out of town and stayed out of town for a while. They said before delivery, that day they said they were taking a stroll. I came before the calculated time. She said they were taking a stroll, and suddenly my mother felt like it's time to deliver. And they quickly took her to the hospital. And while she was in the hospital, my father had to go and buy a towel and something to clean me up. Before he could arrive, my mother was, had already given birth to me. And the doctor, inside the doctor's city room, and the doctor had to use his own personal towel to quickly wrap me, <laughs> to wrap me before my father came. My father said he even missed the road in the market and did not know how to get back to the, where the hospital because they were taking this through. They never planned to give back to me. It was after then the devil woke up. He never knew that I was already born. And then came up again and attacked my family, attacked my family. Then my mother started giving back to ladies again, ladies again, ladies again, ladies again, ladies, again, ladies until... She gave birth to, she was pregnant of the last male child by whom two of them died together. So I became the only male child in my family presently. The only male child. In the generation of Moses, he was the only male spared. He was the only male his age. All other males that were born that time were all killed. Check your Bible. There is, Moses had no mate. He had no mate. It, the midwife spared him. It was only him that was born that time. After the midwife spared him, the king now said they should kill all male children and told everybody in the country. So they now started killing all male children. But at that time, Moses was already born. <laughs> so check history. If you read the Bible, you will see his brother was three years older than him. And then Joshua was many years younger than him. So all others were far younger than him. And others were three years older than him. He was, he was the only person in that generation that was spared by the midwives and the rest were killed because of afflictions and attack some of you while i'm talking right now you are remembering your own life how god spared you how god spared you from from being destroyed if god never spared you by now you would have been crushed totally but the almighty god spared you because of your destiny every special destiny always attracts special attack for example do you know that god wanted jo uh, jacob to be the 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 heir but the bible says to us that esau and him began to fight in the womb the bible made us understand that esau fought him seriously and esau pushed and came out before him and god used prophecy to rearrange it and finally god said Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. 
And today we know where Jacob is. We don't know where Esau is. I know that God had chosen Joseph. But the attack he passed through started from the womb. The Bible says they wrestled in the womb. The two babies started fighting inside the womb. Your destiny determines the fight you fight, sir. Jacob began to fight from the womb. Listen carefully. Some of you, you are passing through all kinds of things and you are fighting warfare. Fighting and fighting. And, and you are wondering why. It is because of your destiny. Imagine Moses. They had to kill all male children except him. God raised, taught the midwives. They spared him. The midwife just had master. said, this boy is a fight. Let us just leave him alone. And they left him. Now let us go to attack number two. The second attack of Moses' life. So that you can picture yourself in the scripture. After birth, the attack intensified. Point number one is before birth. Point number two is after birth, when he was an infant, the attack intensified. The king now said, I don't just want you to kill children that are being born. I want you to kill all infants. And they gave the mandate to every Egyptian. So Egyptians began to move from house to house to locate those who were already born. And they killed all of them who were already born, except Moses. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse number 23, Hebrews 11, verse 23, the Bible says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They saw that he was a proper child, the parents saw, the parents have been giving back to children before. They had seniors before Moses. But they saw this child is not a normal child like other children. It's uncommon. He had a special destiny. So they refused to fear the king's commandment. Other people were bringing out their children to be beheaded. Not knowing that it was Moses they were looking for. The Bible said the parents knew that this one is a proper child. is unbeheadable. So they kept him very seriously. And he was not beheaded. He was not killed. In Exodus chapter number 2, verse 1, the Bible says, And there went a man of God of Levi, and came and took a wife, daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that was a goodly child, he here they called him a goodly child, she hid him three months. I mean, imagine a child made not to cry for three months. They hid him. They made him not to cry for three months, so that he would not be killed came at his birth i don't know how they were able to do it. maybe they were putting bread in his mouth so that he won't cry they stuff his mouth with a lot of bread so he won't cry so they shut him up or whenever he's crying they they, they tie his mouth they they they, 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 they use this, this thing that they are using to quarantine people now <laughs> that thing that they are tying people's mouth uh, mask they they, they, they they use mouth to tie his mouth and block his throat so he won't cry for three months after three months, his mother could no longer hide him. They had to put him in an ark. Of, he entered the ark. <laughs> he entered the ark in his generation. After Noah. He entered the ark. So they put him in the ark. And he had to sail through the sea. He had to pass through the waters as an infant. Only him. There was no sailor with him. There was no captain of any ship with him. Only him alone. He sailed. He never sank. Until Pharaoh's daughter found him and took him in to become his son. Are you following me, somebody? After birth, he still passed through attack. After birth. Number three. Number three. The third attack in Moses' life was at the introduction of his destiny. The enemy thought since Pharaoh's daughter had adopted him, he cannot fulfill his destiny anymore. So they, fought, they left him alone. He read law in Egypt. And then uh, the his destiny have already been thwarted. So let us leave him alone. He's now a lawyer. He's going to become a pharaoh. So they have reprogrammed his destiny to be a pharaoh. And remember, pharaoh's daughter did not have a son. So they already calculated that this is the new pharaoh. So we have reorganized his destiny. He cannot be a deliverer. In fact, he will be serving in Egypt for the rest of his life. So they reorganized him. He, he was now being prepared to be a pharaoh. If I, according to <laughs> one of my... <laughs> he was to be a pharaoh. So they were packaging him to be a pharaoh until suddenly he woke up one day. God inspired him and he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The Bible says he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He said to himself, I refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And went to go and see his true people. He went to the children 
Israel to go and see how they were faring because he began to hear stories about the children of Israel and later got to know at the age of to be a Pharaoh that he was a, an Israelite. Hallelujah, praise God. And then he decided to meet with his generation. It was when he went to Israel. What is going on with this mic? It was when he went to see the children of Israel that he realized his destiny was to deliver them. <laughs> and the devil came after him again. So at the introduction of his destiny, when he realized that he was not supposed to be a Pharaoh, that being a Pharaoh was to see many people have their destinies have been thwarted. The enemy has relocated them from being a deliverer to being a Pharaoh. <laughs> they are not Pharaohs. Child, they are now Pharaoh. <laughs> they are now in the palace of Pharaoh. Not knowing that that is not their destiny. Their destiny is not to be a Pharaoh. David, Moses' destiny was not to be a Pharaoh. So he realized it at the age of 40. They groomed him to be a Pharaoh. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2 from verse 11 to 15, And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their bodies and spied on an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him that we did wrong, We are first smitten now thy fellow. And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us, intended thou to kill me as thou killed the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known now. When Pharaoh had this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by well. So at this point, he had to run for his life and run away from destiny. At the introduction of his destiny, he was attacked by the spirit of error. Spirit of error entered into him and attacked him. Now, when he went to see his brethren, the anointing came on him, and God made him understand that you are supposed to deliver them from bondage. The Bible says to us, as, as soon as he looked, he saw somebody beating up an Israelite, and he got very angry. And he gave the man a blow, and the man died immediately, and he buried the man. The Bible says the next day he saw two Israelites fighting. And he began to separate them. The Bible says to us, one of them, the person that did wrong, is the person that did the other one wrong, said, do you want to kill me the way you killed the Egyptian yesterday? The Bible says he became afraid. Now, the two things he did was supposed to be his destiny. Number one, he was supposed to deliver Israel out of Egypt. Number two, he was supposed to judge Israel, the Israelites. The two things he did for those two days were the summary of his destiny. Number one, deliver Israel out of the hand of Egypt by killing Egypt, sir. by beating Egypt to death. Number two, he was supposed to judge the two judge Israelites and give them peace. That was what he was doing in the wilderness when Jethro, his father-in-law, met him. That was his destiny, man. He was fulfilling his destiny when Jethro met him. So that day, the two things he did was part of his destiny, but he now did them by the spirit of error. He beat up that man and the man died. And then they accused him by the real content of his destiny. They accused him by the real content of his destiny. In Acts chapter 7 from verse number 22 to 29. Acts 7, 22 to 29. The Bible says, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. Have you seen that? He was learned so that they can turn him to a his destiny was to be thwarted. The enemy had already arranged that this one, instead of being a deliverer, we are, we are metamorphosing you into a pharaoh. They made sure he was learned in the wisdom of Egypt and he was mighty in words and deed as an Egyptian. The Bible says that when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart. That's inspiration. It came into his heart to visit the, his brethren children of Israel and see one of them suffer wrong. He defended him and avenged him and was up, uh, that, was, that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. And he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. But they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as, and as, the, as the strove and would have set them at not again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren. Why do you wrong one another? The Bible says, But he who did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? That was exactly his destiny. They questioned it. Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Will thou kill me as thou killed the Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses fled at this saying and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he began to. He had to run for his life. 
the attack intensified. The devil even used citizens of his own country, those that God sent him to, to attack him. This is what happens to people when you are about to enter destiny. At the beginning of each, at the beginning of your major destiny, at the entrance, get ready for attack. The people that God sent you to will attack you. I have passed through that in Kenya. The people that God sent me to attacked me back in this nation, sir. Attacked me seriously. And the Lord God Almighty delivered me. And they have attacked many that never had destinies around East Africa and were able to deport them or destroy them or kill them. But the Lord God Almighty kept me here up until now. Hallelujah. Praise God. So at the inception, get ready. Those that God sent you to will attack you. Number four, identity crisis. He suffered identity crisis. At some point of your worship or your fulfillment of destiny, get ready to suffer identity crisis. Affliction will come on you in the area of identity crisis and the crisis will be serious. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 16 to 20, Exodus 2, the Bible says, Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters and they came and drew water and filled the trough to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. And Moses stood up and held them and watered their flock. And when they were come to rule their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian, have you seen that? Identity crisis. An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water on, enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left, left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you know that Moses was seen to become an Egyptian? His destiny, his identity was deleted. He became an Egyptian. And that was a plan the devil had for him before. The devil wanted him colonized. Since you are born, you will become an Egyptian. You will die an Egyptian. In fact, the highest you'll be is a pharaoh. <laughs> so the devil he arranged his destiny, realigned it to his own plan. But God still delivered him. God delivered him by the time he ran. He ran away. They still identified him as an Egyptian, but God still delivered him. That is why the Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. Now, he ran and stayed in the house of this man. Then his destiny was subverted. The devil was very happy after he ran and said, Finally, I caught him. He is no more in Egypt, so he cannot deliver the children of Israel. Number one. Number two, let us give him another job and change his destiny. Lamentation chapter 3, verse number 36. Lamentation 3, verse 36. They change his destiny. <laughs> the Bible says in Lamentation 3, 36, it says, To subvert a man in his course, the Lord approved not. You did not understand. To subvert a man in his course, the Lord approved not. To change a man's destiny. That's what he's saying. God does not approve. To change a man's destiny to another thing. God had not approved it. They changed his destiny. How? Exodus chapter 2 verse number. Uh, no, Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Alright, let's start from verse 2. Uh, chapter 2. Let's start from Exodus chapter 2. From verse 21 to 22. Then I move to Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. You see how the, the devil packaged and subverted his destiny. <laughs> and that's why to people that are great today, church, many times they would have been subverted to another thing. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2, verse 21 to 22, And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses, Zipporah, his daughter. And she bare him a son. And they called his name Gershon. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. If you read the book of Acts chapter Acts of the body, chapter number 7, verse 29. The Bible says, Then fled Moses at this scene, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. So after he gave back to Gershon, he gave back to another son again. Two sons. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, you will see how his destiny was subverted. Since he had married in Midian, his destiny was already subverted. Now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he fled, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even unto Horeb. Hallelujah. Praise God. At this point, they have already changed Moses' destiny from 
the one leading the children of Israel to their promised land, from being a judge, from being a deliverer, from being a ruler to a katuriara, and they made sure that he was a katuriara under his father-in-law, so that he would not be bold enough to even ask for a release, because the being a country prayer was his way of paying dowry. Because we did not know whether he carried some money out of Egypt when he ran away. He didn't want to be killed. So when they got to the house of Ruel or the house of Jethro, and Jethro gave him a lady to marry, he was now serving by being a country for the man in order to pay the dowry. So they have already subverted his destiny from being a deliverer, from being a judge, from being a ruler, to becoming a katuriara. Again, one of the things you need to notice, the Bible says he was a katuriara for his father-in-law. So it's not easy to walk away from your father-in-law or else you want to lose your wife. Again, he was, the Bible says he was led, he had led the flock to the back side. So they have taken his destiny from the front side to the back side. And the devil was comfortable that Moses' destiny had been attacked, afflicted, and he had changed his mind from being a deliverer, a ruler, to a katuriara. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing what I'm seeing here, ma'am? Yes, sir. Oh, you have any question for me yet? Not yet, sir. We're All still right. digesting what you're seeing. Okay. Wonderful. Hallelujah. So by the time they discovered that he was already at the back side of the desert, they were fine. The devil was okay. Do you know, sir, ma, he was there for 40 years. The, he was he learned studied law for 40 years he was about to get married when his trouble started and he ran away he ran away and he married a midianite settled in the house of his father-in-law he was living in the boys quarters at the back of the house so that was why he always carried the animal to the back side of, because everything about him that was at the back 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 he was only passing the backyard of life backyard of destiny everything he was relegated to the back he has lost the front line grace so he was not keeping the animal at the back side of the desert. And the devil was not comfortable because he was now 40 years plus, making him 80 years. So the devil thought that his life was already ending. So there's nothing for us to do, Greg, about. This guy is finished. We have finished him. Every one of you watching me, that the enemy thinks he has finished you. I decree a resurrection of your destiny, your original destiny. In the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any area of your life that the enemy had attacked you and believed that I, I have closed this chapter, I have taken it to the backside, not even of the field, but of the desert. I have changed him from being a leader to a leader of animals. I have reorganized his destiny and he's very happy. I decree a divine reshufflement right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree you are coming out to see fulfill your destiny. Amen. That destiny that looks very blurry, that looks very dark, you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, number seven. He himself denied his own destiny. <laughs> he was not comfortable as a katuria rasa. The Bible says was Moses was content with him. Okay, number six is where we are. Delay of destiny. His destiny was delayed for another 40 years and he was fine with it. He has settled down and accepted that that is destiny. Exodus chapter 7 verse number 7. Exodus 7 verse 7. And Moses was four score years old and Aaron four score and three years old when, when they speak unto Pharaoh. Now, he was 80 years old by the time God was not trying to call him back. So he has spent 40 years. His destiny had been delayed. Acts chapter 7, verse number 23. The Bible says in Acts 7, 23, and when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren. So he was 40 years when he visited them and had that attack on his destiny and he ran away. He was 80 years when his chapter reopened again. Eight, 40 wasted years as a cattle arasa. 40 wasted years 40 years of delay and that is what some people are passing through 40 years of delay they are when there's no testimony about them when they're only with animals when they are not on point when they are away from their destiny 40 years some of you you are as i'm talking now you are remembering your son he's now a drunkard he is away from his destiny 
or a womanizer or just an idiot somewhere messing up his life he's passing through his own 40 years of delay i speak as a prophet here today the lord god almighty that rescued moses will rescue that child in the mighty name of jesus Christ. the lord god almighty that rescued moses will rescue that child in the name of jesus Christ. number seven Amen. denial of destiny number seven moses himself denied his own destiny by himself the bible says in exodus chapter 4 from verse 10 and moses said unto the lord oh my lord i am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant but i am slow of speech and of a slow tongue and the lord said to him who had made the man's mouth or who maketh the dumb or the deaf or seen or the blind have not i the lord now therefore go and i will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say and he said o lord send i pray thee by the hand of whom thou wilt send verse that's verse number 13. this is where moses released his destiny as a father send somebody else he denied his own destiny it was an attack many times there are people that are called to be pastors and they deny they said i don't want to be pastor anymore that's an attack on them it's an attack there was a time in my life i was i was running away from being a pastor i wanted to be a lawyer or an engineer i mean many times i'll be in church when i pray demons will run out of people they will come and call me and say come and join us to do deliverance come and join us to pray because there are, there's somebody that is afflicted by devil i've said no i'm not coming i want to be a lawyer please 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 you guys should not in fact i don't want ordination i don't want anything leave me i want to, i will deny my own destiny i was running from it i have seen people run helter skelter away from their destiny it is an attack the devil is attacking you so that you can remain a cattle <laughs> yes sir so that you can remain at the back side of the desert this man was attacked until he said god please send somebody else i thought i was the one at the age of 40 but now i've changed my mind i am content with being a cattle allow me with these goats i'm okay with these animals allow me allow me stay in jethro's house and serve him oh jerry i don't want to serve god anymore i'm serving jethro i am already i'm a staff in jethro's workshop and jethro pays me salary in fact he gave me a wife let me just relax here he said oh my lord send i pray thee by the hand of whom that said give me another version of that place so we can read other versions may you not reject your destiny by yourself amen then the anger no i'm not talking of the anger of the lord here verse 13 please and he said oh my lord i pray you send by the hand of some other whom you will send me no i don't want to be sent another version see and he said oh lord send if you will by the hand of anyone whom it seems good to you to send another version again another version very quickly sir but he said oh my lord please send someone else he released his destiny there's an attack you can pass through that you release your destiny sir the attack was so serious and strong on his mind his mind was already being bewitched and he handed over and surrendered his destiny many times you see people that god had called to do some serious things on earth and because of the attack they passed through they just relinquish what god had given to them they will deny their own destiny by themselves when jesus was the power to pass through the cross the bible said jesus prayed and said let this cup pass from me oh god let it pass then he concluded and said not my will but your will be done and god said this cup will not pass god had to send an angel to strengthen him to drink that cup by force there are many times because of the afflictions we pass through we want to relinquish our destinies don't try it don't try it that destiny is what god will use to bring you to limelight do you know that it is the last 40 years of Moses' life that made Moses so sweet that everybody is praying to be like him? Today, there are some people that are carrying walking stick like him, the rod of Moses. They are carrying it like him. He became a model to this day today. Why? Because of what he passed through and how he succeeded in ministry within the remaining 40 years of his life. So he denied his destiny. Number eight, the eighth attack Moses passed through was marital turbulence marital turbulence in exodus chapter 4 verse number 20 to 26 mark it everyone that have a special destiny the devil always comes around to attack them 
on the area of their marriage. Comes, he always comes. He came around me at my own time and wanted me to marry a witch and programmed the witch for me. I'm telling you, programmed the witch in a powerful way that I couldn't have fallen out if not for prophetic grace that delivered me. Yes, sir. So understand it well. When you are passing through some attacks, especially this kind of attack I'm talking about, it is because your destiny is special. Special destinies always attract special attacks. The Bible says the wife that he married for about 40 years or lower than 40 years, Zipporah attacked him and called him a bloody man. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 4, verse 20 to 21, and Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon the earth. And he returned unto the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return to Egypt, see that thou do all the signs before, all the wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand. But I will hide this heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let uh, him go, Behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass as they went in the way in the inn, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. The Bible says, And then Zipporah took a sharp knife, a sharp stone, and cut off the foreskin of her son, and cast it at his feet, and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then he said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Now when Moses was going to serve God, he had not circumcised his son. And God came after him because it was a law that was a requirement. So while, he, because he did not do that, God wanted to kill him. The Bible says to us, the wife whom he had been telling that they must circumcise the child, now woke up and took a sharp stone and circumcised the child. After circumcising the child, she called Moses a bloody husband. Now you might not know that after this encounter, Moses sent her back home. Moses and this woman had married like crisis. Moses sent her back home. In Exodus chapter 18, from verse 5, Exodus 18, verse 5, and Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife and Moses, unto Moses, unto the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law, Jethro, I am come to thee, and, and thy wife, I have, Jethro, I am come unto thee, and thy wife, and her two sons with her. So Moses drove her away. And did all the wonders in the wilderness. The father in law brought her back. If you read through the scripture, we never had the voice of that woman for one minute. The last time we had her voice was when she called Moses a bloody husband. So Moses had challenges. Married. When you carry an uncommon destiny, prepare for marital challenges. Stand your ground. The Bible says in the text that I read to you, Psalm chapter 34, verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. The Lord delivered him from them all. You are going to be free from them all by mm -hmm. the power of the Holy Ghost. So get ready for marital crisis. Get ready for marital crisis. Hallelujah. Number, number nine, ministerial attacks. Ministerial attacks in the life of Moses was so much. People attacked him ministerially in a serious way. The first one, you find it in Acts chapter 7, verse 35. Acts chapter 7, verse 35. The Bible says, This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a, a ruler and a judge? The same, and the same did God send to be ruler and deliver, uh, and, de and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. So God sent him to be their deliverer. Now let us see the attacks he passed through. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 7 to 9 says, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the feet, but they shall proceed no further, for, the, for their foolish shall be made manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Now, from called Janus and Jambres that attacked Moses in ministry. Janus and Jambres. In Leviticus chapter 9, verse 23 to 24, 
Moses and Aaron offered to God burnt offering. And they did not use matches to strike the light. And fire came down from heaven and consumed the offering. In Leviticus chapter 10 verse 1 to 3. Nadab and Abihu decided to disconnect from Moses. And do their own sacrifice by themselves. And they lit a strange fire. And the fire consumed them. Those are attacks in ministry. Again in number 16. From verse 1 to 5 and verse 28 to 35. Korah, Datan, and Abiram came against him. They fought him stand still. They fought him seriously until he prayed a dangerous prayer for them that they should not die a normal death. And God answered the prayer instantly. And God commanded the ground to open up. The ground opened up and swallowed them up alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Attacks in ministry. You will see attacks. Numbers chapter 13 verse 26 to 33. Numbers 13, 26 to 33. This was when Moses sent 12 spies to go and spy the land of Canaan where they were going to. The Bible says 10 of them came back with evil report. They told them that we are not able to go up. The people are mightier than we. We were like grasshoppers before them. And every church member of Moses began to cry. There will be people like that in your ministry. People that will rise up. And when they speak to the congregation, this congregation will disconnect from you and start crying. They would begin to have sorrow. And you're wondering, why are they having sorrow? It is because of these people, spies that have returned. In Numbers chapter 17, verse number 36. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers 14 from verse 36. Is, and the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him, to bring up his slander upon the land. Verse 37. Even these, those men uh, that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the lord so god caused them to expire why because they had evil reports evil reports see no matter how god has called you get ready to be attacked at every major junction of your life number 10 number 10, the 10th fight he fought the 10th fight moses fought was ancestral ambushment ancestral ambushment and central ambushment happened to him when one of those, uh, you know, the, the Bible says in Psalm 106, verse 32. Let me hit it from Psalm 102, verse 32 to 33. Psalm 106, verse 32 says, They angered him also at the water of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. A central ambushment came on him when the devil steered up his church members and they provoked him to anger and he disobeyed god and beat the rock instead of speaking to the rock and god closed his chapter the bible says was in numbers chapter 20 verse 10 to 12 and moses and Aaron gathered together the people before the rock and said unto them hear ye ye rebels must we fetch water out of this rock and moses lifted up his hand and with his rod and smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the, uh, and the congregation drank and their beasts. And the Lord said unto Moses and to Aaron, Because ye have not believed him need to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Wherefore ye shall not bring them, bring this congregation into the land which I have given unto them. God removed the work from their hand. God took the work away because of ancestral abushment. How do I know it's an ancestral abushment? If Genesis 49 verse 5 to 7. Genesis 49 verse 5 to 7. The Bible says, Simeon and Levi are brethren instrument of cruelty, cruelty are in their habitation oh my soul come not thou unto their secrets and so on and so forth it is simeon and levi who in genesis 34 went to kill a whole nation because they, their sister was raped and it was their sister that went to meet the guy to the sister that left home and went Bible says that dwelleth in the secret of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty to their sister that left home and went to meet the guy and the guy raped her the bible says to us the guy came and begged and they said every one of them must be circumcised they agreed simeon and levi went and finished them because of anger they were very angry now moses came from that tribe when the devil knew that moses came from that tribe the devil pulled that trigger by making people provoke him and they provoked him and they lost favor with god that's ancestral ambushment number 11 denial of the promised land denial of the promised land Moses was denied the promised land by the Almighty. It's another attack. He was denied what he had lived for. He had 
labor to be in the promised land. He had labor to carry other people along into the promised land. He lost that opportunity. This Romans chapter 1, verse 37. The Bible says, And the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. Numbers 20, verse number 2. The Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because he believed me not to sanctify me and in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring the children of the congregation into the land which I had, which I gave them. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 26 to 27. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes, and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me on this matter, and get thee up into the top of Pisgah, and lift up thy hand, and lift up thine eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward and behold it he, he behold he behold it with thy eyes for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. that was where god stopped him he said look at the place but you'll not get there and central ambushment attacked him and central ambushment the devil ambushed him and centrally <laughs> he was denied the promised land number 12. <laughs> after he died, they were fighting for his body <laughs> after he died the devil was not fighting the bible is in jude chapter 1 verse 9 jude 1 9 yet michael the angel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of moses does not take does not bring against him a real accusation but said the lord rebuked him the devil was contending with the dead body of this guy passed through attack before battle he was born over attacked now listen as i'm preaching now i am telling the story of somebody's life like this as you are hearing me you are seeing your picture in this scripture they started from before you were born and they are seen they have not left you till now it is because of your destiny what do you do discover your destiny and focus on it permanently if you can focus on your destiny you will conquer every attack you will see the end of every attack and they will not see your end. Discover your destiny and focus on that destiny. Discover your destiny and stick to that destiny like Joseph stuck to his destiny. Discover your destiny and don't allow anything make you offend God. Discover your destiny and stick to your destiny. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. If you lose your destiny, you are a fool. Don't ever hand over your destiny to anybody. Don't surrender your destiny. Don't mortgage your destiny. I want us to pray right now. Father, I refuse to mortgage my destiny. No matter what I'm passing through, protect me, O oh God. Keep me, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I will not mortgage my destiny. I will not hand over my destiny to anybody. I will not hand over my destiny to anybody. I will not hand over my destiny to anybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I release the anointing for you to recover your destiny. Amen. Your destiny will not be subverted. Amen. Your destiny will not be thwarted. Amen. Your destiny will not be used up by the devil. Amen. You will not become a pharaoh when God had called you to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. You will not become a cattle at the backside of the desert when God wants you to lead the children of Israel from the front side of the, of the way and take them to destiny. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I challenge you to go and rediscover your destiny and fight for your destiny. Go warfare. Fight for your destiny. Don't allow your destiny to be thwarted. Don't allow the devil to take your destiny away from you. Please fight for your destiny. Whoever is watching me is a word for you. I am fighting for mine. 
Because I have discovered that my destiny is special. That is why the devil is attacking. And God is giving me victory on every side. And he's still going to give me more victories. You also fight for your death. Don't allow the devil take it away from you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to give our offering so we can close this first service. And I in for the second service. Whatever you are, you can go ahead and send your offering to us uh, as Empesa. You can send your, the offering to us as Empesa or your tithes or your seed or your sacrifices for the building of the temple of God here. Go ahead. Make sure you are part of the building. Send your offering. Send your tithes. Use your Empesa pay bill. If you're outside Africa, you send wave and put my phone number to come straight. If you need the account number to be projected, take a photograph of it and use it. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you as you send an offering right now. I decree as you are sending the offering, it brings redemption to your destiny. It brings redemption to your destiny. It brings redemption to your destiny. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your destiny will not be mortgaged. Amen. You will not become a Pharaoh when God wants you to be a Moses, a deliverer. Mm. You will not be subverted to a Katuriara when God had called you to be at the front line of destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, recover all. Amen. Recover financially, recover spiritually, recover in every area of life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank in you, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord God Almighty bless you. Amen. We'll meet again in the second service by 12 o'clock, by 12 noon, East African time, Kenya, for the second service. May God Almighty bless you and may his face shine upon you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank Pastor Grace for sitting with me here to moderate and stick with me. All right. So we'll get back for our second service in the next one hour plus or there about by 12 noon. And in the evening, we shall be up for the prayers for the nations of the world because the pandemic must end today and a new chapter opens first of june completely completely in jesus name amen god bless you have a wonderful morning bye bye see you shortly <laughs>